if, if you play in a band, you'll know what I mean by playing off the other the other guys in the group. And, and not being able to do that, despite how much practice at home, really showed today. Um, I mean, that's not to say that it wasn't brilliant, because it, it was, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, within this video, you'll see some, some snippets of that. But in some areas, it just really highlighted the difference in thinking that you're practicing at home and doing all the right things, and yet, when you go and get yourself in a band setting, just the difference is, um, is amazing. Okay, first rehearsal back after lockdown. Let's go. There are probably quite a few people that are in the same situation as I am at the moment where we've just been kind of released or partially released from lockdown and now it's time to actually start going and making some music again with your buddies. Thankfully we all live relatively close to each other which means that uh, we don't have to worry about anyone being too late or what's also nice is that uh, where we practice isn't too far away either. Actually it's a new place we're practicing today and um, we've not been here before. Um, apart from a, a gig, but normally we rehearse in this other hall, um, which is super reverby and, and and everything kind of bounces about a million times before uh, you stop hearing it. So it ends up becoming a bit of a wall of sound. But um, but thankfully today we're playing has relatively low ceilings and uh, you know some carpeted areas. I've got my rug in the back anyway just to stop some of the the bounce coming off the floor. So yeah, acoustics is one of those things that it's quite often. Over, not overlooked as such, but I don't think people spend enough time thinking about what they can do themselves uh, to, to improve acoustics. So for me, for example, I always use a, a really thick kind of high pile rug to try and capture certainly a lot of the, the stuff coming from the, the floor toms because I don't play, uh, I don't play with much muffling on the drums at all, um, if any. So um, I like to, I like that wide open sound, but I don't like the overtones and all the nastiness that can sometimes come with it if you find yourself in, you know, one of the rooms that is super glassy. No matter how many people you fit into a room that's, you know, got tiled walls or things like that, it always sounds just absolutely crazy, especially if you've got like bright cymbals. Thankfully, where we're playing today, it's actually quite a decent uh, place acoustically. Um, it's relatively low ceiling. It has got a wooden floor, but it's relatively low ceiling. I've got my rug. I think the guy said that he's actually put a staged area in now, whereas previously it was on the same level. So if that's got a half decent kind of carpeted finish, and that will help as well. Of course, it doesn't matter too much for um, rehearsals. It's more the gigs and things, but it's always nice to rehearse in some kind of similar context to, to what you're used to playing in, you know? blessing and a curse really being down here if you're a musician because um, yeah the, the, the gigs are, are, are pretty cool and you get to know a lot of the people but at the same time the uh, the number of kind of musician options that you have if you do need to find say I don't know a new bassist or um, or a new keyboardist good luck finding a keyboardist I was invited to join this band that had you know a, a keyboardist kind of already established um, and uh, yeah thank god because if we if we tried adding a keyboardist, trying to find one that 
hasn't already got you know a million other commitments is is a whole different kettle of fish. The only downside I think of playing in this place that we're just about to uh, to get to is that the the parking, as with a lot of kind of town kind of pubs and clubs and things, the parking outside just doesn't exist. So there's normally like taxi ranks and things. So as a rule, I generally kind of uh, pull up in a taxi rank, unload my stuff, and then go and find somewhere much better to park. And there we go. So here we are. Right, so now the fun bit begins, having to uh, load, unload, etc. Who's this? It's just pulled up behind me. Who knows? later we are done I'll tell you what it really highlights 
pl not not playing for you know in in a band setting for for three months uh, after all this lockdown stuff, but playing every single day. Let me just tighten you up. But playing um, every single day at home on the other kit, it really highlights the importance of playing in a band setting. Um, if that's you know what you do as a as a weekend kind of hobby um, because I found today that despite practicing every day rusty as in some areas you know really rusty in some areas that I didn't think I would be rusty in um, just because of the difference in you know what you're hearing compared to playing along with original records or uh, if, if you play in a band you'll know what I mean by playing off the other the other guys in the group and, and not being able to do that despite how much practice at home really kind of um, really showed today um, I mean that's not to say that it wasn't brilliant because it brought it was I really really enjoyed it and uh, yeah in some areas it just really highlighted the difference in thinking that you're practicing at home and doing all the right things and yet when you go and get yourself in a band setting just the difference is um, is amazing um, and I kind of forgot a little bit after the you know three months I kind of forgot what it was like to you know play there in that band setting and, and some of the cues and things that, that we we've put in as a band because you know we play a lot of 80s uh, rock songs and a lot of those in the days that were in the days of fade outs you know, when fade outs were massive um you don't hear you know as many fade outs uh, these days but um but yeah because of that we have to come up with our own endings and come up with our own kind of uh you know adjoining sections to bridge one uh, one part of the song to the other um, and yeah, remembering those cues was su surprisingly tricky in some areas. And from a drummer's point of view, the one thing that, that I found a bit surprising was that if you're gonna if you're gonna be a, what I would call a decent drummer, you need to be able to do things like hit rim shots repeatedly every time when you mean to hit rim shots, and not hit rim shots when you don't mean to hit rim shots. And playing dynamically, I suppose, is is what I'm kind of pointing towards, and not being able to play on a full-size kit in that band setting as I said you you do definitely lose some of those dynamics that otherwise you know if you're gigging every weekend like I was before all this it becomes second nature you know you don't have to worry about oh you know, there's a rim shot here I can hit the rim shot it becomes muscle memory you literally don't even think about it um, you just play the music musically um, but yeah uh, rehearsing today really highlighted that when, when I when things start opening again and we start rehearsing as a band more frequently again there's some work to do to get back to where I was before and yeah that has surprised me a little bit because I thought with all the practice I've been doing at home albeit on a different kit you know it's just like jumping on someone else's kit it's never set up the same way or uh, there are there are differences in the feel and you know the different types of heads that they use it really highlights today the difference that those things make and how how you can kind of take it for granted when you're gigging every weekend it becomes a natural feel for you. You know your kit and you know how it how it feels and how it plays. So yeah, jumping on it again after three months, really surprising. But having said that, just getting together with a group of people, having a play around, playing some songs, um, and just having a bit of a laugh and having some, you know, some good times playing music again, you can't you honestly cannot beat it. Um, it brings back all those kind of good vibes and those good feelings that you have when I was, you know, that I had when I was gigging before all this. So yeah, I mean, as soon as as soon as we can get back out and going again, the better, really. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to put some put some rehearsal time into getting back on the acoustic kit and learning the feel of that again. Actually, playing the drums, you know, playing rudiments, playing you know the different instruments and knowing where they are around the kit is fine. You know, that that comes back pretty quickly. That's just like riding the bike. The reality is that there's a lot more skill in finessing the dynamics of playing than there is just being able to you know kick out uh, the groove of your favorite song so yeah some rehearsal to do for sure when we get back but all in all a really good experience and um, I just can't wait to get playing again now really but in the meantime I thought it was worth just kind of sharing my experience of you know, going back to practice for the first time and uh, and how that differs from practicing at home and you've got to be careful that you're not too critical of yourself you know you, you've got to make sure that you're not over analyzing your over play, uh, your own playing and that you're being kind of fair on yourself which is why kind of recording the video and just documenting the whole process it gives me something to look back on 
Um, the one thing that I've always found is that if, if ever you feel like you're rusty or you know you're playing sloppily, it's never quite as bad when you look it back uh, look back at it as it felt when you were playing it, which is nice. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that there's nothing to improve on. Um, it just means that you can quite often get carried away in the moment thinking, oh, I've got so much to do to get back to where I was. And in reality, I might be surprised. I might find that when I listen to all those recordings back that it's not quite as bad as I thought it was. And, um, and I can kind of be a little bit easier on myself and, and, and try and focus on improving, but don't obsess over it do with getting a decent uh, car camera mount though because you're bouncing around all over the place. Right, home time. Let's unload.